photographer. Her story is entitled, Say My Name. No, I don't want to be a nurse. I'm going to be a writer. See, that's not what Filipino American parents want to hear. It's certainly not what my parents wanted to hear. Not their namesake, D-E-C-E-R-R-Y, pronounced as Desiree. After my dad's birth month, December, and my mom's nickname, Cherry. Oh, I know. <laughs> so, I'm going to tell you why. I was a junior in high school, and we just returned to class from lunch. Welcome back, everyone, my AP US history teacher exclaimed, which was followed by a, now turn to page, the whole class moaned. Popcorn reading. I, on the other hand, loved it. I was always eager to read the longer paragraphs. So I scooped the chapter for the lengthiest one, and I placed my finger on it. The moment the reader before me was on their last sentence, I immediately raised my hand. She had to pick me, so I began reading. That day, we were learning about agriculture in California. I vividly remember reading a sentence about Filipinos and Larry Itleon. In my head, I said, I'm Filipino, and who's Larry Itleon? So quickly, I turned the page, wanting more, only to find out that was it. A thousand plus pages and only one sentence in that entire chapter. I needed more. Second year, UC Irvine. I find it. I took a course on Filipino American studies, and that's when I learned that Larry Itleon, labor organizer, activist, stood side by side Cesar Chavez to lead the United Farm Workers in advocating for farm workers' rights. September 7th, 1965 a date that hasn't been recognized. That day, Larry at Leon convinced grape workers to go on strike. This includes 2,000 Filipinos, members of the Agricultural Workers Organizing Committee demanding for higher pay, formerly known as the Delano Grape Strike. Filipinos were a large part of California's Asian American population, just as they, they are today. Just as they are today. Sorry. So that, until now, with AB 123, maybe they will. Cabo Bayan, a Filipino-American organization that I was proudly part of took an active role in the Philam community. Rob Bonta, an assemblyman, came to speak at one of these meetings where he introduced AB 123, a bill that would supplement California's rich farm workers' history with, the, with Filipino-Americans' contribution to the farm labor movement. And in 2013, the bill finally passed. Now students of California will have the opportunity to learn about a more accurate account of the farm labor movement. And it is because of the community and their ability to unite in their efforts to push for this change that a snippet of the Filipino American community will be represented in our textbooks. So that Filipino children, like my siblings, will have the opportunity to learn about their history which has been left out and largely forgotten in mainstream education. This was a pivotal time for me. This was when I realized why I have to be a writer. And while nurses provide a very, very valuable service, I need to heal through writing by bringing an eye to the Filipino American community. But not just this community. No, I won't stop there. 
It's about the entire Asian American community. In fact, all people of color. So no, I don't want to be a nurse. And only now did I understand what I couldn't then. That given my parents' history, my father, at age 14, started working in the rice terraces along with his nine other siblings. Knee deep in water and back hunched over for hours at a time. My mother, with a father who was a seaman, often explained that not being able to see him every day was tough. We understood because he was working to provide for the family. So you see, these are my parents' histories and why they wanted more for me. Mag-aral ka ng mabuti. Study hard, my parents would tell me. These are the reasons why my parents wanted more for me and my siblings. And while I didn't realize it then, my lolo, a term coined for grandpa, took me to school on days my parents couldn't. We rode in his tiny blue 1981 Honda Civic. He would hand me a newspaper every morning and say, now read it. Still not familiar with all the words, I tried. But once it got too difficult, I would flip it over and just stare at the photos instead. But my Lolo would correct me and turn it right side up. As a child, I didn't understand why he pushed reading on me so much. And while I didn't realize it, the seeds were already being planted based on the virtues that my parents set before me and what my grandparents instilled in them. It was in my DNA. They all just made sure I blossomed. So nurse or not, I'm going to make them proud. And after being published with my very first article in the college newspaper, I went home for winter break with a handful of copies. I presented them to my parents without revealing the fact that an article I wrote was even in it. I was scared and nervous that they wouldn't accept this as an accomplishment, even though I did. They were both shocked and unsure about what to expect until they read the article. For the first time since I claimed I wanted to be a writer and not a nurse, I saw pride and joy in their faces. Thank you. Thank you, Desiree. And we have one more. Last up is Walbert Castillo, video producer for USA Today. And his story is entitled Mama Nini. When was the first time you remember holding someone's hand? Think about all the people you've ever held hands with. A family member, a friend, a significant other. Wouldn't you say that hand-holding is one of the most casual, yet intimate physical acts out there? The way your fingers interlock and intertwine with someone else's. It's both innocent and special. But it doesn't always have to be romantic, and it doesn't always have to mean something either. And it doesn't have to be... Mine ain't either. Hand-holding is so special to me. And for me, you know, the last time I remember holding my, grand my girl girlfriend's hand at the movie theaters, unexpectedly, startled, I accidentally threw the popcorn because I was so afraid. I was so startled. And we loved every second of it. I remember the time my fingertips turned blue because my parents couldn't let go before I boarded the bus to go to college. The last person I held hands with was with my grandmother, Mama Nene. It was her big, thick palms 
wrapped around my little hands that led me across the street when the walking signal was on. It was her hands that provided a safe place to lay my head whenever I was a cranky baby. It was her hands. It was her hands that protected these little palms from touching the hot stove whenever she made a Filipino dish. But her hands touched more than my little life. My grandmother's life touched many. She was born on January 22nd, 1922 in Gran Cotabato, Philippines, which is located in the southern province, comprised mostly of rice fields and farms. You know, she was married to my grandfather, Walter, who was a lieutenant during World War II. And they had seven children together. How amazing. FYI, my name, Walbert, is actually a combination of my grandfather's name, Walter, and my dad's name, Robert. <laughs> but it really is. <laughs> and, you know, in 1977, my grandfather passed away. He had a massive heart attack, and he had wounds from the war. He had bullets lodged in his body, and doctors had advised not to remove them due to further complications. But my grandmother, she used to nurse those wounds. And actually, she had big dreams for herself. She wanted to become a nurse herself, but ultimately decided to fulfill her duties as a mother. So she, she settled for professional dressmaking at home to care for all of her seven children. My family, um, they didn't have a lot of money. So she would make the clothes for all of her seven children. You know, one of those children actually pursued my grandmother's dreams and she became a nurse. She ended up going to America to follow her dreams and was able to find a job, and she was able to provide a home for my grandmother to, to Im immigrate here successfully. And so my grandmother packed her things, took it all, and she was like, let's go to America, let's go. And I was born 18 years later. My parents would occasionally ask my grandma if they could watch me, because they were both working full-time jobs to, to provide for the family. And like I said earlier, I was a cranky baby. <laughs> and it was always so difficult to calm me down. But Mama Nini, she always found some way to calm me down. She would hold me tightly. She would sing me a lullaby. Or she would flip through the pages of a story to get me to fall asleep. And it would work every single time. You know, her hands continued to care for me as I grew. It was her hands that taught these hands how to clap whenever her or someone told the joke. It was her hands that taught these hands how to measure jasmine rice the right way. <laughs> and it was her hands that taught these hands how to crack crabs in front of all my white friends. You know, she taught me the importance of hand holding. And throughout the years, Mama Nini, she would live in both the Philippines and the US. You know, splitting her love and time between her grandchildren, her children, and her great-grandchildren. So four weeks ago, I received a call and was told that my grandmother was on the brink of death. Um, her body was shutting down and that she was losing her grip on life. You know, she suffered from an enlarged heart and she was suffering from severe symptoms of dementia. So for me, going all the way over there to the Philippines, there was a chance that she wouldn't have recognized who I was as a person. But forget that. I dropped all my things at work, and within 24 hours, I was on the plane to go to the Philippines. And it isn't easy going over there to my grandmother's area where she was at in the hospital. From Washington, D.C., to San Francisco, to Hong Kong, to Cebu City, to Cagayan de Oro, to Oligan City, 36 hours in total. And my fear was, I wouldn't make it on time. It was 3 a.m. when I arrived at the hospital, and I saw all my family members there. 
and I was ushered to my grandmother's side. Mama Nini, it's me. I'm finally here. And then my aunt, the nurse, who I mentioned earlier, um, she asked my grandmother, which translates in the scion, do you know who this is? And within that moment, I grabbed her hands and I held onto them so, so tight. They were cold and clammy. They were severely bruised and all bandaged up from all the difficulties the nurses had with drawing blood from all her veins, which they couldn't find. But I knew these hands. They were familiar and they were home to me. And it was her hands that were now nestled in my loving grasp. You know, her hands, which used to be so much bigger than mine, were much smaller because I grew up. And in that moment, Mama Nini called out my name, Albert. You know, of all the 20 grandchildren she has, she was 97 years old, so she had a ton of family. She only remembered a few, but on this day, she remembered me. You know, within the coming days, more and more family and friends visit her from all over the world, and even in the Philippines. You know, and her life touched so many lives. You know, just like me, her children, her grandchildren, and her great-grandchildren all stayed by her bedside, held her hand, reminisced all the stories and the memories they had together. They sobbed uncontrollably, and she listened. You know, as hard as it was fighting back all the tears, you know, her loving hands can t taught me how to love, how to care, how to, she fed me. And she taught these hands how to clap for joy. But at this moment, 